Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. Now in today's video, we're continuing with part three of our shortcut method of removing and replacing the oil pump assembly on a Chrysler 3.6 liter front wheel drive vehicle. Now in part two, we actually removed and reinstalled the oil pump and then we started all four of the bolts where you bolted to the block. Now in today's episode, we're gonna be torquing those bolts and then we're gonna work on the pickup tube and reinstalling the chain. Now here's a quick tip you can use for this repair or for other repairs in the future. When you're installing a bolt into a socket, it usually stay in it with gravity alone. If you're working overhead, that's not too much of an issue, but from time to time you're trying to start the bolt something or you bump up against something, the bolt might come out and fall. So now you're spending time chasing a bolt and hopefully you find out where it went. Also, if you're working the opposite way, sockets overhead and the bolts down below, there's always the tendency for the bolt to fall out. Now here's something you can do that's very cheap and inexpensive. Grab you some tissue paper or paper towel, tear off a square that's about the size of the bolt head, place it over the bolt head, and then work your socket down on there. What it's gonna do is cause you to have a nice tight fit. You can also tear off the excess if you want. And now when you're working overhead, this way, that way, whatever, the socket's not gonna fall off. Now when you're done, all you do is you pull it off and grab the piece of tissue paper. So I've got my bolt on my socket using that toilet paper trick I showed you. And I'm gonna just put it on here and I'm gonna start getting it started. Last thing you wanna do is cross thread it, so take your time. And when you're done, just pull the socket off. Then you can grab something in there and grab that paper. So now we can go ahead and grab the last bolt, set the socket up, and get ready to install it. Now if you find that you've got some issues with using this method, you can still use that pocket magnet to hold the bolt up in there and then use a wrench to kind of reach up in there and possibly get a few threads started. Once you get a few started, then you can put the socket back on it. So for now, let's go ahead and insert this. And when it comes time to tightening the bolts on the oil pump assembly, there is no sequence you need to follow, but there is a spec, and that spec is 106 inch-pounds, not foot-pounds, inch-pounds. So keep that in mind, 106 inch-pounds. And we'll go ahead and start with the easy side here. Nothing more than a 10 millimeter socket, extension, and torque wrench. Just double check. And then we'll work on using that same socket that's got a swivel and an extension to get to the other two. Whenever you're tightening fasteners down using a torque wrench, the accuracy of that torque really depends if you're using any kind of extensions, the number of extensions, how long the extensions are, and if you're using any kind of swivels. And when we did the two bolts over here, we used an extension and we torqued it down the spec. We were directly on it. Now being that we're gonna be in this tight tolerance over here, we've gotta use an extension and a swivel. So we're gonna to have to verify how accurate that is. Now luckily, this video was filmed before doing the service manual method. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the oil pan in that procedure and then I'll verify, edit it, and show it in this video. So we're gonna go ahead and torque at the spec using the shorter extension with the swivel and then once we get done with that, we'll go back and we'll see how accurate was that torque. Do we need to go a little bit tighter or is that 106 on that inch pound torque wrench gonna be good enough? So just go ahead and grab your swivel, your extension and your torque wrench and start torquing everything down. Repeat it for the last one. 
There you have it. Now I promised you earlier that we are actually going to verify the torque on the two bolts that's hard to get to in this location right here by removing the upper aluminum pan. Just so that we can kind of dispute that argument whether or not the swivel and the extension is going to cause us some issues. And now we've got access to those two bolts. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a paint mark on both of those. Come back and then try to retorque it at 106 inch pounds and see if they move. So I'm just grabbing a permanent marker, making some witness marks. Just so we get a rough idea of where it was in relation to either the block or the oil pump. We can use either one of them and see if these lines actually move. So grab the torque wrench. Let's see if we hear an audible click and if we see any movement as well. There you go, 106 inch pounds. Same thing here. And if you look, we'll see that the mark on the bolts and the oil pump or the block, whichever we used, are still in line. We had no movement. So that verifies that the swivel socket and the extension have no effect on that final outcome of 106 inch pounds. So at this point, go ahead and grab the old pickup tube assembly. Right here, we need to make sure we replace this O-ring. And what I like to do is get some wheel bearing grease, coat the O-ring. So that way it slides up into the body of the pump a lot easier. I don't have to worry about it tearing. Now when we go back with the oil pickup tube, we're going to guide the tube into the body of the oil pump. We're going to rotate it a little bit because we want the O-ring to get up inside the recessed area. We want the flange to be flush against the body of the pump. Because if we don't, we risk the chance of causing a leak at this location right here. And like I was mentioning, the tube goes inside the pump and that O-ring. We want that O-ring to be inside the recessed area. It's not getting squished between the oil pump and the flange. It's actually sliding inside of the pump. So the best way to do it is kind of wiggle a little bit and kind of rotate or rock the pickup tube at the same time. And you'll know you have it because you'll see that the flange is actually perfectly up against the body of the pump and you can rotate and you see that there's nothing kicked out. There's no blue colored O-ring squeezed out and also we're nice and tight up against the body. And once it's fully seated, we can grab that 10 millimeter bolt, thread it back in there, run it down by hand and then follow it up with that wrench again. As far as torque, just snug it down. That's all you need to worry about. You can't really get a torque wrench up in here enough to get a specific torque. But like I said, just tightening with the wrench would be more than enough. And just snug it down and there we have it. So now we can actually move over to the chain assembly. Now this one's on the engine stand. So of course I've got something holding the chain up so it doesn't want to keep falling down inside the actually timing cover. But being that if the engine is in the vehicle, the chain's going to be falling down by gravity so you don't have to worry about that. Now remember that tensioner, how we released the tension? All we did was use a screwdriver and we rotated it this way. We're going to be doing the same thing. And while we're doing that, we're going to be working the chain onto the oil pump drive gear. Now remember, there is a smooth side which faces the pump, and then we've got a recessed side right here. And there's also a cut in the opening for the shaft, so there is one way this lines up. So you just need to make sure that you see where that is. Once you've got the chain on, line it up, and then you worry about that T45 Torx bolt. So for now, we're going to work on getting the chain on, moving the tensioner, and getting everything back on. So now we can go ahead and grab that chain and grab the gear. Now I'm trying to keep that notch on the gear close to where the notch is on the pump. I'm gonna drop the gear down into the timing chain cover right here where I've got some slack with the chain and then I can pick up and give it some tension. Now looking at it, even if my gear does not line up with the pump, I can still rotate the pump until it gets close to being where the lines are with the gear. Now that chain does not need to be timed in any way. It just goes onto the gear. So while I'm supporting that, I'll work on moving the tensioner over and try to slide the gear onto the shaft of the oil pump. So at this point, we've got everything ready. 
We're gonna go ahead and put our screwdriver on our tensioner and pull it out of the way. Same time, we're gonna kind of work on lining up the sprocket with the shaft. And there we have it. Now we can work on getting that T45 on there to keep it in place. Now the torque on that T45 ball is 18 foot-pounds. Yes, I said foot-pounds, 18 foot-pounds. Now if you've got a inch-pound torque wrench that goes high enough, the equivalent would be 216 inch-pounds. And the way you figure that is, you multiply your foot-pounds by 12, and that's what you get for inch-pounds. So if you've got a smaller torque wrench that fit up in here, and it goes that high, then 216 would be what you need in inch-pounds, otherwise 18 foot-pounds. So now that we've got the chain installed and we've gone ahead and torqued down that T45, we're ready to install the protective cover in those two 8 millimeters. So just set the cover in place, grab your two bolts, line them up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it down with my cordless quarter inch drive. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten it the rest of the way with my ratchet. I don't want to break these off, they're smaller bolts. But just so I don't have to sit there and use the ratchet non-stop, I'm just going to snug them down first. And then follow up with the ratchet. And that right there is everything for part three. Now in part four, we're gonna be tidying everything up. We're gonna be dealing with the electrical portion. We're gonna be working on cleaning and reinstalling the upper oil pan. So if you like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you got any comments or suggestions about anything you saw in today's video or anything Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram related, you can always email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com. Also, if you shop on Amazon, please make sure to use the link that's also in the description below this video, and any purchases that you make will help support this channel. Once again, everybody, thanks for watching.